Because Sunday morning is a time to be alive. Every Sunday is an indication that God's Son is rising over your life. Can I hear you shout a good hallelujah if you are in the house and you are alive this morning? God bless you. I want to thank God for my friend and my brother, Pastor Femi Ebolua, for this privilege to share this platform with you. Livingstone Church is like our home church. We belong here. We are part of this, and we thank God for what God is doing in the house. The Almighty God will keep taking you higher and higher and granting you more and more grace all the days of your life. Pastor, we appreciate and we love you. Thank you very much. Everyone who is part of this house, who have been staying here, who have been here for so the, the many years that God has enabled us to be together, the Lord will bless you. It's so good to share with you this morning on the things that God has put in my heart to share with you at this time. And I, I believe that very soon, this season that we are in will pass, and we will have the opportunity to share together again face to face. That will come very soon. In the meantime, shall we just bow our heads and say a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the privilege to come together and to spend time in your presence. Thank you for what you are doing right now. Thank you for what you will keep doing in our life. Thank you for what you have been doing. Again, we ask, Lord, that you take all the glory, take all the honor, and let your name be glorified in our life and in our hearts. That, Lord, your word we have full expression in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. The moment that we have together, Lord, let it be impactful. Help us, Lord, that together we will share value and add value to one another in the name of Jesus. Thank you once again, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Once again, if you're in the house this lovely Sunday morning, can you shout a good hallelujah? Wow, amen and amen. I'm here today by the grace of the Almighty God to share with you on what I've been asked to share, and that is managing your time for your lifting. Or rather, managing time for your lifting. I pray for you that when time meets with you in the name that is above every other name, when time meets with you, it will bring about a lifting in your life. In the name of Jesus. I believe the Almighty God that the time we are in will bring forth liftings for you. God will lift you up. Because it's God's word that says that when men say there is a casting down, you will say there is a lifting up. And I decree and prophesy there will be a lifting up or there is a lifting up for you in the name of Jesus. I want to take my text from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Verse 1 to 11, I can't read everything, but I'll just read a few of the verses. But you can read everything. Time won't permit me to read everything. It says, to everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. And I know you know we are under the heaven. He said, there's a time to be born and there's a time to die. He said, there's a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. He said, there is a time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down. And a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, 
and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together. It goes on, and in verse 11, it says, He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their hearts, so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. So there's a beginning and there's an end. Now, in between the beginning and the end of everything is what we call time. Now, the beginning you might not know, but the end you will know, and the end you know by how time has been utilized. It is the utilization of time that determines what happens at the end. And I believe God for someone here that at the end you will have a song of victory. You will have a song of joy. You will have shoutings because at the end your lifting will come. I have another scripture that I want to read and that's the scripture in Acts of the Apostles chapter 3 if you read from verse 1. The Bible says now Peter, Acts chapter 3 from verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. I'd like you to notice the word hour of prayer. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily. I'd like you to notice the word there again, daily. At the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask arms of them that entered into the temple. Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an arms, Peter, Fastening eyes unto him with John said, Look on us. Look on us. And he gave it unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I have none, but such as I have given unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and work. And he took him up by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up, stood and walked, and entered with them into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. You know, a man that has never walked in his life, all of a sudden, because he was in the temple at the hour of prayer. You know, you never got to miss an hour of prayer. You never should miss a time of prayer. But you know what? There's an hour that is called an hour of prayer. So there's a time to pray and then there's a time to receive the reward of your prayer. There's a time to sow and there's a time to receive the reward of your sowing. That is a harvest. So there is time for everything as the Bible tells us. Now you need to understand, child of God, that time is our greatest resource. The only thing that is equal with all men is time. Each one of us has 24 hours. But you know, the thing is, what you become in time will be determined by what you do with time. What you become in time is determined by what you do with time. You know, this man was always at the gate. He was kept there daily, but he was there at the hour of prayer. His going there daily was not what worked it. What worked it is that he was there at the hour of prayer. Can you imagine that this man had been going and going daily, but at the hour of prayer he was not there. The power of God that was available at the hour of prayer will not be able to reach him because he wasn't there at the hour of prayer. Thank God that you are here at a time like this. I want to prophesy into your life today in the name that is above every other name. That the power that is resident in this place, the power that is available in the name of Jesus, that same power will rest on you in the name of Jesus Christ. There is time for everything the Bible tells us. And then he says at the end of the day that God makes everything, not some things, not some things, everything. God makes all things beautiful in his Time. Now, I'd like us to take a point, I mean, take uh, uh, some points out of what we have read today. Number one, the Bible says there is time. I hear people say, I don't have time, but the truth of the matter is that there is time. There is time forever, whatever we have time for, there is time. That's what the Bible says, there is time. There is time for whatever it is that you make out time for. So there is time. There is time. Time. Never you say there is no time. That's why the Bible in Acts chapter 3 verse 6 says the hour of prayer. There is a time that has been set up for prayer. A time that has been set up for certain things to happen. It's called the hour of prayer. So there is time. Never you tell yourself that there is no time. Can I say something to you? There is a time to be poor. There is a time to be rich. For someone listening to me this morning in the name that is above every other name, your time to be rich has come. Can I hear an amen in the house? There is a time for plenty. Your time for plenty 
Almighty has come in the name of Jesus. God says there is time. And I believe that this is your time. Because God said there is time. This is your hour. This is your season. This is your moment. This is the time that God has been waiting for. No wonder he said so. He said now is the time. Is the day of salvation. That time has come for you in the name of Jesus. Check out my next point. He says to miss your time can be dangerous. And that's the truth. In, in, in Luke chapter 19 verse 44, the Bible tells us about the story of a city. And it says that that city was brought to ruins because the city did not realize the time of their visitation. It is dangerous to miss your time. Because when time shows up, opportunities also follow. When time shows up, there are certain things that come. Time is critical. You know what? My third point is that time is our common denominator. In John chapter 11, it's clear there. John chapter 11, 9 to verse 10. The Bible makes it there. Are there not 12 hours in a day? If a man works in the day, he does not stumble. So there is a time to make progress. That's to work. He doesn't stumble. He has 12 hours like the other man has 12 hours. But if somebody else refuses to make progress in the time when progress is made, he said that person stumbles. My prayer for you is that you will not stumble in the name of Jesus. You will never stumble. You will not fail in the name of Jesus. You will not stumble. You will not fall. You will not falter in the name of Jesus. Can I hear you loud and clear amen in the house? Time is our denominator. It's common to all men. Every one of us has the same amount of time. So you cannot look at the rich and say they are rich because they have more time. They also have 24 hours. The poor have 24 hours. The lame have 24 hours. Those who can speak have 24 hours. Those who cannot speak have 24 hours. Those in Nigeria have 24 hours. In Africa, it's 24 hours. In USA, it's 24 hours. That's why I don't believe there's anything like African time. Time is time. It's a denominator for every one of us. We have the same amount of Time. Now it is how we use our time that determines what we get from life. That's the truth. How you use your time determines what you get from life. Life is fair. It is fair because it gives to everyone the quantum of time that you utilize for certain things. That's what it does. If you read Max and Matthew chapter 25 from verse 15 to 30, Matthew 25, 15 to 30, it, it talks about that parable, the parable of the kingdom of the, the kingdom of God. It said the man was traveling and he gave talents to people. Everyone got a talent. Everyone got something. They got it according to their several ability. How did they get their ability? They got their ability by virtue of what they used their time to build. Some used their time to grow. Others used their time to groan. Some used their time to complete their task. Others used their time to complain about their task. He gave them according to their several ability. And then some went, one went and took what they gave him and started working with it. The other one went and took what they gave him and started working with it. They were doing positive things with their time. But the other one took what they gave him and he used his time to go and bury what they gave him. I don't know what you have buried but I stand here today under the authority of God and I declare for you in the name that is above every other thing. Whatever has been buried that needs to be resurrected in your life in this Sunday morning meeting in this Sunday morning service I declare that that thing will resurrect in the name of Jesus. That man buried there and so he received nothing. But those who put their time to use, who use their time to work on their gifts, who use their time to work on what it is that God has put in their hands, we are lifted. What are the gifts that God has given you? When God gives you something, he gives you raw material. And he expects you to use the time he has given you to polish the raw material. You've got to be able to polish it. You've got to be able to look at it, wash it. Clean it and make it better than when God gave it to you. The truth is that anything God gives you, he wants you to make it better. The truth is, again, if you don't make it better, you become bitter because of it. And many times, some people have not used their time to make their gift better. So what do they do? They look at other people's gifts and they get bitter. But that will not be your story. Because you will use your time and in using your time, you will be lifted in the name of Jesus. If you believe that, can you say a good amen? Another point I want to share with you is that the beauty of living is in the proper utilization of time. God makes everything beautiful in his time. He makes everything beautiful in his time. The beauty of living is in the utilization, the proper utilization of time. As I said before, that God gives you the raw material, then you use your time to make it beautiful. And God 
helps you. God supports you. God works with you to ensure that what he has given you is beautiful in his own time. So the question you want to ask yourself is, are there things that I cannot do with time? Listen to me, child of God. You cannot save time. There's no bank where you can go and put them and say, okay, just wait for me. I'll use you later. No. When the day breaks, you have your 24 hours. By the time the, break, the day is over, the 24 hours are done. They are used up. They are finished. That's the end of it. You can't save it. So you can't take some of your time and say, let me keep this one and use it later. No, it doesn't work. You can't borrow time. So you can't take time from somebody and say, can I borrow your five minutes? No, you can't do that. But again, let me say this. I know I'm talking about managing your time, but the truth is that you can't even manage your time because... What you don't have control over, how can you manage it? So the question you want to ask is, what do you do? You've got to use your time. Allocate your time. Use your time properly. Use your time to do the things that will add value to your life. Jesus said in John chapter 9 verse 4, John chapter 9 verse 4, He said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. I will, must work in the night because in the day because the night time is coming. Hello, child of God, can I say this to you? Night time is coming. Night time is coming. May you not do in the night of your life what you are supposed to do in the day of your life. I, 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 I hear that loud and clear and I want to say that may you not do in the night of your life what you are supposed to do in the day of your life. There are people who do in the night of their life what they are supposed to do in the day of their life. You know, there's a time to learn, there's a time to end. Some people, they don't want to learn, so they want to quickly end, so they begin to end. And they think that they have gone ahead of others. But those who are learning, keep learning. And by the time they come out, they start ending. And before you know what's happening, by learning, they end more than those who have been ending before them. It's better to learn first and then you end later. Some people, that's not very wise. They want to end and think that they will learn later, but it doesn't work like that. So you've got to understand that you've got to use your time and what you use your time for. How properly you use your time will determine the things that you get in life. How do you then use your time properly? Number one, recognize the power of time. You've got to recognize the power of time. When you don't recognize the power of time, you will despise time and devalue time. The Bible says in Luke chapter 19 verse 43, it says, for the day shall come upon thee that thine enemy shall cast a trench upon thee and compass thee and, 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 and keep thee on every side and shall lay even the ground. It, 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 the reason is that because you didn't know the day, the time of your visitation. So you've got to recognize the power of time. Know that the greatest thing that God has given you is time. If God has given you time, then you have everything. That you woke up this morning is the reason you can hear me today. If you didn't wake up, you won't be able to hear me. Opportunity is not available for the dead. It's only available for those who have time. And when opportunity comes, it is time that is showing you that I'm here for you. You've got to recognize the power of time. Time can change your life. Time can change anything. Time makes a difference in a man's life. If you have time, then you have a lot of things going for you. If you have time, then there's a future for you. Time tells you that there's a future. If you have 10 years, that means you have a future. So you've got to recognize the power of time. Number two, you've got to clarify your goals or your visions for life. What are your goals? What do you want to do? I know that many of us are in the pandemic and so many people have written up themselves and say, oh, this coronavirus has come. The, 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 the pandemic has come. COVID-19 is here. And because of that, nothing is happening. Can I shock you, child? And I don't think it's a shock because everyone knows. Do you know that these times have released people that have become richer and better in down than even now? Many people have developed themselves. They have become skilled at doing certain things. Many people have become so good at doing some things. Clarify your goals, man brother. What are the things that are important to you? What is the goal that you set for your life? Can you clarify it? When the storm comes, it comes to shade you off. It comes to blow your vision. But you have to sit down with yourself and try all you can to clarify your goals. In Luke chapter 14 verse 28, there's a question there. Which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether you are sufficient to finish it? The question is, what are you building? What's your intention? Intending to build a tower. What are you in, what's your intention for 2020? What are your intention for the decade 2020 2030? What are your intentions? If you have no intention, you will fall into detention. What are your intentions? Clarify your good clarity is very important. Number two, prioritize your activities. What's supposed to come first? What's supposed to come last? Keeping the first thing, the main thing, the main thing is the main business of our life. Keeping the main thing, the main thing. 
What are the things that are important in your life? You've got to know how to allocate your time according to the importance of assignments that come your way, according to the importance of the tax that comes your way. You've got to be able to allocate your time properly. Now there are, because I'm rounding up now, time is, is running like we normally say time keeps running, time keeps flying, so you've got to be the pilot. Yeah. There are important things in your life. There are urgent things in your life. There are imp- not imp- things that are not important in your life, and there are things that are not urgent in your life. So there are four categories. There are things that are important as well as urgent. There are things that are important, but they are not urgent. There are things that are not important, but they are urgent. Then there are things that are not important, and they are not urgent. Let me give you an advice, because I know that if I ask you that question, now you will say, oh, I'm going to spend most of my time in the things that are important and urgent. But that's not true, because if you do that, you are going to die before your time, which means that you are going to be running helter-skelter. When something shouts, you just go there. When something shouts, you just go there. And that's what many of us are doing. Even if something is important, if it is urgent, Check it very before you do it. It's better to spend most of your time in the things that are important but not urgent. They are important and not urgent, so you are, you are learning, you are growing through them. That's why you spend most of your time. But the things that are not important but they are urgent, can you find somebody else to whom those things can be important and give it to them? In other words, delegate thing. Delegate those kind of things. Find someone else who can help you out with those things. Holy Spirit. Find someone who can help you out with those kind of things. When something is important, but not important, but urgent, find someone else who can help you with it. Now, there are those things that are not important and they are not urgent. Can I advise you? Please discard those kind of things. Just let them go. Spend most of your time in the things that are important, but not urgent. Spend more of your time in the things that are important and urgent. A bit of your time in the things that are not important but urgent. None of your time on the things that are not important and they are not urgent. I will close by sharing Psalm 31 verse 15. The Bible says, Psalm 31 verse 15, My times are in thy hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemy and from them that persecute me my times are in your hands that man was there for 38 years but one day at the hour of the time that god has appointed for his lifting he was in the right place and god lifted him up no wonder they took his hand and they lifted and then he leaping up leaping up he was walking and leaping at the same time i pray and i declare i prophesy with someone in the house in the name that is above every other name your life will be leaping from this moment you will leap from this moment because that's what god wants for you that's what god designed for you you will begin to leap from this moment in the name of jesus i want you to make that your prayer lift up your voice and say father in the name of jesus my times are in your hands therefore lord help me to use my time well in the name of jesus go ahead and make that your prayer teach me the wisdom of directing my time in the proper way. Teach me the wisdom of directing my time in a good way. Teach me the wisdom of knowing what is important in my life and prioritizing my life according to that which is important. Help me, Lord, to clarify my goals. Help me, O God, to clarify my goals. My times are in your hands, O God. Thank you, Father. One more prayer and then I will round up. You lift up your voice and say, Father, you make all things beautiful in your time. Lord, beautify my life. This morning, go ahead and make that your prayer. Lord, beautify my life. Father, in the name of Jesus, beautify my life. Beautify my life, O God. Lord, help me to find time for the things that are important and major. May my time bring my life, my, my times, the use of my time bring glory to your name in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up my hands before you and I declare in the name of Jesus concerning those who are here this morning listening to this. I ask in the name of Jesus that Lord, you will lift every one of them up. Each one will experience a supernatural lifting. I stand to prophesy as that man lived up in the name of Jesus your destiny will live your life will live your resources will live up everything about you will be on the upward trajectory in the name of Jesus 
Everything around your life will be on the upward trajectory. In the name of Jesus, I decree it will be well with you. When others are saying there's a casting down, you will say there is a lifting up in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God be with you. God reach out to you in the mighty name of Jesus. It will be well with you. Thank you once again, Pastor Femi. It's such an awesome privilege to have this time to come into the space and share with you at this time. God bless you. Have a great day in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah.